Hey everybody, this is Missy Salzberg with one of my best friends in the industry here, and just one of my best buds in general, Chris Pulaski. Mm -hmm. And I tracked her down with what Chris very rarely has, which is a little bit of spare time. <laughs> and I'm going to make her work, which is really cool. So, welcome to Groomer TV. Yeah, And uh, she's got a beautiful guys. beach on here she's going to work on. Thanks, yeah, honey. I thank appreciate you. it. No problem. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, this is a typical pet. He actually is a rescue dog. Um, started out in my salon with a 7F special only because I had no other choice and with regular care and maintenance we have a dog that has lots of hair and not doesn't look too shabby so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly outline this guy I've got a um, 5 8 universal comb on a I believe a 10 or a 15 blade okay Let's take a look just so you know. Oh, excuse me, I lied, that's a 30 blade. Um, most of your metal universal combs work great on either a 30, 15, or a 10. So this happens to be the 30. And we're gonna go ahead and clean up this rear assembly and bring this coat down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna then come in and I'm gonna pop on a longer comb attachment so that I can, um, Whoa, so I can, oh, there it is. So that I can use and leave a little bit of rib spring because he is um, very long back, even for a Bichon. I think I won't, sorry, a three quarters. He is kind of long, which they're supposed to be long, but he also has kind of a tube body versus a lot of rib springs. So I cut his rear angulation in tight then I am gonna leave a little bit more body on the dog. And this is not gonna to take tons of hair off, but it's gonna look pretty good. He was uh, bathed out yesterday. Okay, we're gonna get rid of that coat. There we go. Now we're talking. All right. And then on the front, we're gonna actually come up just underneath his ear we're gonna put that comb attachment in this thick cottony coat, and we're gonna come down and leave a little bit of roundness in the shoulder. Bring it down, bring it around, and get rid of some length. All right, then we're gonna go back to that shorter comb attachment and set that front leg under the dog. All right. There we go, and then we're gonna push this back in. The reason I went shorter is because his front is not made very well. His shoulders are clear up here, and the front of his leg is very far forward also, which makes him look really long. I mean, again, Bichons are supposed to be slightly longer than they are tall, but we do not want them to look like a wiener dog in drag. So, we are working on setting that underneath Say no, 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 huh? We're not dressing up to be Sean. And what that's gonna do too, if you can see the light's not so good here, that's gonna pop the front of that chest out too. All right, so blend that down. I want to bring him up on leg, even though we left a little bit more fullness on the sides, I'm gonna go ahead and reverse. and get rid of that chest hair all the way to the elbow, okay? And that's really gonna help make a big difference in the overall look. Now with this, um, the 5.8, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat because I wanna do a minimal scissoring. I don't wanna scissor any more than I have to. So I'm misting, I'm gonna get my comb, I'm gonna lift that coat up long smooth strokes so we can get some nice blending in here long smooth strokes one of the hardest things with universal combs is making sure that you get all that undercoat brushed out and brushed up they're a finishing tool and he was bathed out fresh yesterday so even just sleeping on his coat has left a little bit of nappiness and I did comb through them, or brush through them, but I didn't comb through them. So now I'm really gonna comb through 
make sure my comb goes through extremely easy. And then I'm gonna go back through and try and get rid of the rest of the wrinkles and tufts. So just something that simple can make such a big difference. So we're coming down, then we're gonna find that point of shoulder, we're coming in. Then we're gonna come down the outside edge and blend, 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 leaving a little bit of fullness in the shoulder to balance with the rear. Then we're gonna flip it around and repeat the rear assembly again. Scoop, blend, blend over, and think down. Now remember, Bichon should be very rounded, so you wanna leave yourself enough room to be able to round all this in. We already took the underline, but we're gonna go ahead and just make sure that there's nothing hanging down. We're gonna grab that uh, three quarters again. Clean this up one more time and watch. I'm gonna hold the skin tight and just make sure that as we come down and look at how much easier it's going through this time. We got a little length off used a little finishing spray, some of our HydroSurge finishing spray, and then just glide it through. And now the dog looks a lot more finished. So two times over with the universal comb. It's gonna be a, it as far as the clippers and my new purple clippers, A6. Had to sneak that in there. Couldn't help myself. All right. And then we're gonna go ahead and trim our feet. We want the feet to sit directly on the floor. So I'm gonna trim around the base, put the foot down like so, and try and make columns versus bevels. All right, so we want the foot to sit on the floor. So rather than coming up under the foot, I'm kind of coming more at a straight angle following the leg versus trying to round it up. So you want those feet sitting on the floor. Then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna get this tail set. This is fun for me. I love cute little Bichon butts. I think everybody does. Nice little round, cute butts. We've got a, the um, ilium, the ischium, and the tail. I just pretend that they're all there. So we're just gonna come in here and round, it just cut everything in together. And what that's gonna do is automatically correct a low tail set if you scissor it into the rear assembly. And remember, again, Bichons are rounded. Everything is rounded with the Bichon. So you want, you wanna show angulation without showing sharpness, all right? In the perfect world, their coats are approximately one inch. All, you know, but in reality, none of them are made the same. So you can tweak things according to, does your customer brush the dog? Does he have a good top line? Does he have enough neck? A lot of them do not have enough neck. So you know, those would be reasons to take a little bit tighter in the neck area. He's very long. I left fullness here to make him look wider. Took this shorter to bring him up a little bit. Um, you know, I'm trying to keep him slightly longer than tall, but again, I don't want him to look like a freight train. So we're gonna comb this up and then just clean up the edges. You can see this is shorter on the top line here to give him more neck. Round it in. Okay, not a lot of scissoring to be done, just kind of cleaning it up. We're gonna bring in this tuck up forward, not back. Always come into your center focal point. Okay, and if you're looking for something really neat and easy to work with to finish out a really soft coat, the 26 tooth blenders are definitely your friend. If you're not getting out to the shows, you might not have seen these yet a lot. You'll see them a lot now in the competition ring, 
But what these guys do is they will take any lumps and bumps that might be left behind by a clipper blade, a universal comb, or what have you, and they will work all that right out of the coat. Look how pretty that looks. Does that look good? And it didn't look terrible before, but even the best scissoring, depending on the coat that you're working on, the 26 tooth blenders can definitely uh, be your friend. So I'm all about um, scissoring, you know, clippering first, universal combs, get your outline mastered, then take your scissors, get the bulk of the remaining coat off, then finish with your 26 tooth blenders and just master that, that outline. All right, make sure that you're following the outline of the dog, the structure, just put your x-ray goggles on and think of the bones that are in there. And that's, that's what we're following. Okay, then we're going to whip around to the front, finish that, finish the head, and we will be done. So feet again. Just think of columns. Nice little pillars that he's standing on. Comb the hair between the toes. Definitely comb it back out so you don't end up with the wedgy toes. Okay, so we're going to go flat. See if I can. He has very crooked front legs, so it's funny the things that his little pasterns will do. Huh. Whoops. Oh, excuse me. We got to keep our light. All right. Stand up, Bubba. There you go. Okay. And we're going to trim like so like so keep that nice on the ground setting on the ground just like the back comb this up long smooth strokes long smooth strokes shake it out let them stand comfortably get your straight shears out and we're gonna come right down. And what I'm looking at is the neck hair and the elbow. We wanna make sure it lines up. I'm barely gonna take any hair off the back of that front leg. Most of the hair came off of the front, of the front leg. Setting that leg underneath, building that fore chest without actually growing more length on the dog's body. Okay. Cut the front in a little bit more. Because these guys should have a pronounced chest. You see this nice full chest here? The longest point should be right at the point of shoulder, and this should be full. That should not be straight up and down. The breed standard of the Bichon says that they should have a pronounced chest. You'll see different styles in the show ring. A lot of times they will manipulate the breed standard to suit the dog that they're working on. Um, a lot of times these guys might have um, the too tall, too long backed, and that's their way of trying to fix it. All right. What I'm going to do now is comb all this coat down. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to come around here because this is my bad side. Is that in your way? Okay. I'm going to come around from just below, just behind the ear, kind of visualize, and I'm gonna get rid of this coat around his neck. Okay, probably about at the Adam's apple. The more you can take off here, the more neck is gonna be exposed. In the perfect world, they talk about like centering the eyes um, and the nose and the mouth to, you know, it's kind of like a frame. But the problem is, as we were discussing this weekend at the Atlanta Pet Fair, is that um, a lot of these guys don't have enough neck. They're very short necked. Watch what happens when I put my hand on this neck. He now shrivels and he is so long. Okay, so he has no neck. For a breed, if you, how do you know what amount of neck a Bichon should have? is they tell you to take this dog and divide it into three parts, okay? 
When you do that, that third part should measure up to the neck. Well, our little guy has some issues in that department. So not only are we gonna build neck, but we are now going to change and we're gonna work on about one third here and try and build two thirds here. Okay, and that was something, you know, that we were talking about. It's a trend in the breed right now. They're trying to really show off that neck. So you're seeing more of that in the breed ring than um, you used to. It's less centered. Now, if you have the perfect dog that has so much neck, then you can do whatever you want. But most of the dogs that you and I see in the grooming shop, not the case, okay? We get all the leftovers. Once I get that marked out underneath, I'm gonna comb everything down. We're gonna take little Jasper here and we're gonna clean up his ear. Let it hang. Don't try and over manipulate it because if you start pulling and tugging too much, it's going to change when he pops his ears out. And, it, and you know what I'm talking about. If anybody is groomed to be Sean out there, the second you put them in the crate and they go, oh, hey, and their ears pop up, they don't look anything like they did five seconds ago. So you got to address that in your grooming. Try not to over manipulate and let them be happy, all right? Now, the next thing I like to do is pull everything forward. Their proportions, what is it, Pina? Five to, I'm having a blonde, five to three, right? Three, what? their head proportions, five, three. Five to three, okay. two-thirds, one-third looking forward. And so did you guys hear that two-thirds, say that again. Two thirds, one third looking forward. Looking forward. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that you have this head and then you have this big nose. Bichon's muzzles should be much shorter than what Jasper's are. So as I'm working here, I want to take this back in. I want to shorten his muzzle. So I'm actually rounding this back slightly. Would I do this to every Bichon? Absolutely not. But Jasper has a conformational fault. So I don't wanna leave all this hair to show off that fault. I wanna get rid of it. So angling things back, drawing your eye back, is gonna make it look shorter. So that's what we're doing, we're shortening it up. Okay, round it out, looks good. Um, and to get that Bichon kind of evil, cute expression, pull everything forward. Take your scissors, angle it just past the outside corner of the eye, okay, angle it. And the reason that you do that is that this, from the outside corner of the eye, end of the nose, the outside corner of the eye should form a perfect triangle. His does not, but we're gonna do our best to create it. Then you're gonna do a little bit of trimming and put an exverted V in here. You can use blending shears, you can use clippers, whatever you need to do. Just be careful not to take too much coat out. I don't want to draw attention to his face. Then pull this back, get your eyelashes pulled out, and get rid of them, okay? That's gonna open up that eye. Then pull back over, and then just work it up and around. And what you're gonna do is then continue to comb all this coat forward and use it to build this head. You see this stuff hanging over? We're gonna get rid of that. He um, had part of his head done yesterday, so there's not a lot coming out. We're gonna pull this forward some more, see if I can find anything out. And remember to include the ears. Don't pull the ears away from the head. Make sure that you include them. Okay, you're going to include them. There you go. Not taking a lot off. Whatever you got here is what you are going to use to set that line. And guys, you know, Jasper's a great boy. He's very sweet, but he is not a, a you know, a confirmationally a great Bichon. But the thing is, if you put hair in the right place, if you maintain the coats, you can take a pretty common looking dog and make him look pretty stinking cute. Now, one of the things that we talked about yesterday, he's a pet customer, so I have to watch leaving too much here, but th something, if you really wanted to complement this structure, is if you could leave a little bit more here, 
it would shorten the muzzle more, okay? But for um, the fact that he's one of my pet dogs and it, his owner doesn't like too much coat in the eyes, we've, t we've maintained expression, but we haven't done all the corrections that we could have done, okay? The last thing I'm gonna tell you is never lift the ear. If you wanna search for hair, any additional coat, just lift the coat up like so, give it a little shake, let that ear fall back into place, and then just make sure that you've cleaned up anything around the edge. And I'd like to, it's kind of like a half circle. You're just gonna round it out. And you should end up with a pretty cute round head. What do you guys think, good? Yeah. All right, thank you.